Welcome back to our channel. Today with me, there is Christy Fong from Aberdeen Standard Investment. Christy is an investment director and responsible for Indian equity. And today we want to discuss with her recent developments in the Indian stock market. Hello, Christy. Hello, Thomas. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Chrissy, we've seen a lot of volatility in global stock markets. And uh, so we are very interested in what's going on in the Indian stock market. So can you, can you show us the big picture? What was happening in the, the Indian stock market during the last couple of months? Sure. Well, the issues that India faced in the year so far is not different from what you've seen in global markets. COVID lockdowns and stimulus, I would say, would be the three key points here. And if you look at how the Indian markets have performed, um, we have seen a recovery from the lows of March. You know, the market's up 17%. That really reflects the gradual opening of the economy. That's also what you see in global markets. But what is different is that India is still about 17% lower from the start of the year. And there are a few issues that challenge India today. Uh, first of all, the number of cases are still rising. The numbers have yet to peak, but if you look at mortality rate, it's still low. Um, so that really reflects you know, the young demographic advantage that India may have. The second is that the lockdown is, start is starting to ease. That is causing some nervousness amongst those who are concerned about how the cases are still on the rise. Um, but it is also a reflection of how the government um, is aware of the cost that is to keeping the economy shut. So the recovery or the reopening of the economy would be the start of a recovery, but it will be a very patchy and slow recovery because, um, yeah, because it is still a very much contained um, a lockdown, oh, sorry, opening that we are seeing in India today. And third is stimulus very much lacking in India, unfortunately, when it comes to fiscal stimulus, but the central bank has been very um, robust in how they are trying to infuse liquidity in the system. So that is providing a bit of relief. So are you expecting more fiscal stimulus in the near future? Not really. Um, governments, the government's hands are tight. Um, you know, the fiscal deficit is something that they're watching very closely. Uh, it is still very much under control, um, and we like to see that as well. Uh, there has been pressure on the government for, you know, to spend more, uh, to, to really try to drive a bit of growth in the, in the economy. But the government is also watching what the credit ratings are, uh, or the sovereign ratings are. So we are not expecting much of a fiscal stimulus boost. Um, the last package that was announced was really very much still driven by the central bank efforts. So what that means is little help by the government. The companies have to be able to defend themselves or fend for themselves. Um, and what this also means is that a key theme emerging would be consolidation and, and towards the strong leading companies with the balance sheet strength. Which industries and stocks have performed very well during the outbreak of the virus? The one that stands out to us um, is really in consumer staples, um, which may not be a surprise given that this is, these are essentially um, you know, basic necessities, essential goods and services. Um, so as a sector, it has been more defensive. It was very interesting to me that at the start of the COVID um, uh, developments that every, the market and every sector fell, but we were still seeing positive returns coming out of some of the consumer staple stocks. The ones that are very obvious to me would be the multinational companies, um, Nestle and Hindustan Unilever. We have a slide there to, to show you um, that over the long term, it has done very well. It's survived through many crises, and the COVID situation is no different. Um, you know, and I think one of the 
reasons is also because there's more spending towards uh, household cleaning products and personal care. But more importantly, they have the nationwide distribution, the footprint and the agility to manage through this crisis. Are there any other industries that you currently prefer? Mm, we actually are more bottom up. You know, we don't really focus on where the industry opportunities are, but more where the bottom up opportunities are. So even in very difficult or seemingly difficult industries, we have been able to see very good stock selection results from there over time. The financial sector is one. Um, where it has been very challenged, um, you know, uh, through many cycles, but yet we constantly see the private sector banks grow strength and strength, and strength uh, simply because they are, um, they're still a very small part of the market as the government sector banks are capital starved, unable to lend, as many other weaker, poorly run financials are unable to managed through this crisis as well, we are seeing that market share opportunities arise for the good, well-run private sector banks. How about stock, stock uh, valuations in, in India? So we have seen a lot of volatility on a global scale, stocks internationally partially recovered. So how about India? Well, the market's a lot lower uh, compared to the start of the year. We are also looking at valuations that are looking cheaper as well. Um, obviously, um, earnings downgrade revisions are coming through too. So if we look at price to book multiple, um, you know, that, that strips aside the cyclicality of earnings, um, you'll see that the MSCI India is still at a... Um, two standard deviations lower than the 10-year historical average. So that gives a sense that valuations are a lot more attractive than before. Um, it was actually closer to um, GFC valuations. Um, so yes, I think India looks very interesting. If you are patient and long-term enough, uh, you know, it is quite an interesting time to be picking up good stocks um, at distressed valuations. So we know everything um, in valuation of stocks is about uh, growth and, and profit. So uh, what will the impact of the coronavirus crisis be on the, the outlook for Indian stocks? Yes. The honest truth is that the visibility of demand recovering um, or the resolution of supply side logistical challenges that's affecting companies um, is very poor. So even as India reopens, we are expecting many quarters of, um, you know, of gradual improvement. If you look at the slide, um, it gives you a sense of what people are expecting as well. In India, the financial year ends in March. So let's focus on FY21 and FY22. FY21 would be the year ending March 2021. Um, and, you know, no one's really expecting a strong rebound in earnings. It will really come at the, you know, the later stage, FY22. So I think this is a realistic assumption to make. Um, you know, normalization is unexpected to come about until perhaps a year later. So which, which industries and companies will recover from the from the crisis first, uh, who will be the ones that are ahead of the curve? I guess, obviously, the ones that are hardest hit could see a rebound first. One of the cement companies we talked about, uh, we spoke to recently, spoke about pent-up demand, and he expects a V-shaped recovery when, when the virus situation normalizes. But that really means when you see a complete eradication of the virus, which perhaps may not be um, you know, which may be some time away. Um, so industries like cement, housing, construction, these could see quick, um, stronger recoveries. But again, I'll focus more on the structural changes that would mean for India as an economy. And by structural changes, I really am thinking about, you know, the survivorship, which companies will still be around and which won't. Um, there, uh, there are deep stresses in the economy that 
really applies to, I mean, the risks there are higher for the informal sector, the smaller companies, the companies that don't have strong management teams or strong balance sheets. So I expect that you might be in a situation where the stronger companies get stronger and, you know, the economy becomes more formal. Um, and by formal economy, I really mean, um, or if you look at India, a lot of the economy is still driven by small mom and pop operators. Um, so, so you see a trend towards more formalization there in India, and that really would benefit the companies that have liquid and strong balance sheets, that have strong management teams, nationwide distribution network, logistics advantage, and so on. I really see a flight to quality um, and certain companies being clear long-term winners coming out of this crisis. So we know that India has a huge and important IT sector and a business process outsourcing industry that are vitally important for the Indian economy. So what's, what's your opinion about the IT sector in India? Yes, India has a um, very highly skilled set of workforce particularly strong in engineering. Um, IT services is also one very strong industry and what we consider you know, exporting talent from India. Um, this, the, this industry will continue to do well. Um, they have already adapted to what's more um, digitalization trends that their customers are wanting. So away from the bread and butter, you know, they no longer call centers essentially. Um, what they do tends to be a bit more highly skilled um, um, and, and catered to the, the new age, the digital world. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, I think the industry will continue to do well. Um, it is also an uh, um, industry that offers a bit more diversification within one's portfolio because they are more US dollar revenue. A weak rupee would benefit um, the companies there. Um, so yes, it's a sector that we find interesting and one that we have an overweight position in in the funds. So let's, let's talk about your portfolios. Uh, so any um, uh, alterations uh, you, that you did, what, what changes did you made in your Indian, Indian equity portfolios? Sure. When COVID hit, um, you know, and it was clearly becoming quite a difficult, tenuous situation for the Indian markets, the first thing we did was to go through the portfolio and check for any solvency liquidity issues. Mm -hmm. And we were quite, I'm quite pleased to report that there were very few. I mean, in fact, none. So we didn't really have to make any big forced sales or exits for that reason. But what we did was all really to um, manage down our exposures for certain companies um, that we feel would be a bit more vulnerable to, to the weakness of the economy. So we have reduced certain names like um, one of the container rail operators, uh, that's one example, or a more um, uh, one of the consumer staple stocks that has more African Indonesian presence. You know, those were the things that we're thinking about which, which companies would be more um, vulnerable. But also what we did was to add to more defensiveness in the portfolio. We found the, I mean, the sell-off also meant a good chance to be buying stocks for cheaper. So we have initiated new names such as a power utilities uh, company that's quite defensive and actually offers a dividend yield in India that's quite, and that's quite rare. Um, we actually bought into one of the pharmaceuticals uh, and biosimilars. Um, and, and so these are just a few examples of what we've done. A real estate company that we believe will be a leading company as the industry consolidates. So we have taken the opportunity, opportunity to buy into weakness. We have also increased our IT services exposure. Um, that's another example. But overall, if you look at the portfolio, the, the underlying theme has not changed. It is still a portfolio that's made up of very highly resilient companies, what we consider the long-term winners in each sector. Uh, we still like the, the domestic-oriented industries, consumer staples, private sector banks, insurance, for example, um, and even our way of investing due to the infrastructure theme is through cement companies, paint companies. Um, so structurally, the, the fund has not changed in its nature. It is still one very much focused on high quality companies um, in, 
in industries that you know we still see structural growth opportunities in India. This was Christy Fong from Aberdeen Standard Investments. Thank you very much, Christy, for being here with us today and sharing your insights. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you.